In this video, we're going to look at higher order factors in complex structural equation models like this. So in this model, we have burnout, which if I open this up, is comprised of all of the indicators that are part of its first order factors. So we have BM1 through 6 here. Let me hide that again. And then we have BM1 and 2 here, 3 and 4 here, 5 and 6 here. These are part of the burnout construct, which has three lower order dimensions emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and reduced productivity, or reduced personal accomplishment, I think is its official term. These all predict burnout from management formatively. The trouble is when you have a formative higher order construct being predicted by other factors in a model like this, well, you can't predict it. And here's why. You can see we have 0, 0, 0, 0, but look at this, a perfect R square. What's going on? Well, the lower order factors here are comprised of the same indicators as the higher order factor. So they predict it perfectly and they don't allow any other variance to be explained because all of the variance is already explained by these lower order dimensions. So to run a model like this, you have to run it in two stages. Smart PLS4 makes this pretty easy. Check this out. So we just ran it. We go to report. And then if you go down here, to latent variables and then click on scores. These are the latent variable scores, also known as factor scores. They are a single standardized value that can act as a proxy to represent that factor rather than using all of the underlying manifest variables. So what we can do is we can go up here to create data file and we can choose which values to include. Let me zoom in here. So we can include the latent variable scores for sure. That will just include one new score per factor. And we can also include the manifest variable scores. If you're just doing a path model, that is one factor score or one latent variable score per factor, then you don't need the manifest variable scores. However, if you want to keep your measurement model as full and rich as possible, then you should also include manifest variable scores. To do this the most rigorous way possible, I will be including these. So hit create. And that data set is now back here. If we hit save and go back, you can see there is a new data set right here called Sohana Observed derived from PLS results. If I double click on that, I can make some edits. You can see down here at the bottom, we now have all the latent variable scores. And if we zoom in here, you can see that these are standardized. We have a mean of zero and a standard deviation somewhere, here it is, of one. So these have been standardized, whereas our manifest variables have just been transferred over from our original data set. So let's do a couple things. First, I'm gonna click on setup, and here are all the variables. I'm going to scroll down and rename those latent variable scores because those names are really long. I'm just gonna call this LVS, and then hit update. Those have been updated, and then we'll go back. And what we'd like to do now is duplicate this model here. So if you right click it, you can say copy resource, and then right click on it again and say paste resource. And then you can rename this to whatever you'd like. And hit save. We now have a new model. Double click that new model. Same one as before, but this time I'm going to select the data set right here for PLS results, this one. Okay. Now you may also notice that this data set has far fewer indicators than our last data set because it's only bringing over the ones we're using. That's kind of nice. So what we need to do now is rebuild our burnout from management factor. The first thing we can do is delete all of these. I just hit delete on that. And then right click this, show indicators, and right now it has none, so that makes things easy. What we'll do is we'll bring in depersonalization, emotional exhaustion, and holding control, I'm going to select reduce productivity. Drag those over into here, and then reverse the direction because this is formative. And now we're ready. If we run this, You can see we now have actual predicted coefficients from the other factors. 
and we still have the weights from these three dimensions. And then you just evaluate it the same way you would evaluate a model with no second order factor. Well, I hope that was helpful. You now know how to run a model with a second order formative endogenous factor in it. Nice.